Hello there, and welcome to my arty corner of YouTube. My name's Angela, Angela Porter, and for 28 years I was a science teacher, teaching mainly children with um, additional learning needs, as it's called now, special educational needs, at the time I was doing it. But for the past, oh, I don't know, several years, most probably, oh gosh, about eight, nine years, perhaps a bit longer, I've been focusing on doing art, being an artist. Um, I'm particularly well known for my adult colouring books, but um, art of all kinds. And once a teacher, you can't take that kind of teaching out of me, though these aren't formal lessons as such, but I do like to try to inspire and encourage others to create and be creative. And I do think that my particular style of art, which is whimsical and stylized and often abstract, not always, but it's that whimsy there, is something that I think everybody can do in their own way. So it's just giving you ideas for suggestions for things you can do in your sketchbooks. And then every now and again, I'll look at something as a, a whole piece of work and work through my way of thinking about it. Doesn't mean I'm right, doesn't mean I'm wrong, it just means it's me. And I think that's an important thing for yourselves as well. So after that little introduction, let me just say thank you to everybody who subscribed to my channel. I appreciate you all so very much. Um, it's just lovely to think that you're finding this useful and my wittering on. And thank you for the likes, for the comments. I have got some lovely comments to reply to. So thank you very much to that. And, um, and I really mean that. And for the thumbs up, the shares, the shout outs, you know, mentioning this channel, if you've used it for inspiration for your own work, mentioning me, usually as art word, A-R-T-W-Y-R-D, because that's my kind of business name and I use it all over internet, the internet, but I'm Angela. So thank you so much. With no further ado, I'm going to start doing some art because it's, oh, it's over. It's nearly 20 to 10 in the morning here. I've got so much work I feel I should be doing today, but I need to start like this. I do. And then I need to prioritize what needs to be done. Um, so it's gonna be an interesting day, shall we say, for me. As in, may you live in interesting times as guilt kicks in, but it's okay, it'll be fine. So yesterday, in my last video, yesterday for me, maybe today, if you've watched the video today, I was looking at drawing little images, sort of like, not in boxes, but on the top of coloured boxes. And I did put nice black lines around it because I like, I like a clear boundary. I like a clear border. And I, I fought against this for years and I sometimes still don't accept this, but I do like it. I do. And I was saying, I like I particularly like the backgrounds that I've used alcohol markers in because I like that flatness of colour, the smoothness of colour. Um, it's something I wasn't getting with intense pencils. This one wasn't too bad, but the others, oh, I really should leave wet media alone generally. Um, but that's my personal opinion. I know somebody has left me a comment saying they particularly like this one. And I'm going, or oh, is it that one? That one. Going, yeah, that one's most probably the best. This one is very bizarre. So, and I was saying that I hadn't chosen the right kind of paper to use alcohol markers on. I'm going to use alcohol markers again today. And I've um, dropped my box of Arteza Everblend markers with the bullet nibs down onto the table so I can see the colours that I've got to play with. And I'm going to do some of these. And I'm going to do some things that are a bit different. I am going to start by drawing in well, perhaps different to yesterday. I'm going to start by drawing in a just a pencil box. It just gives me an area to work within and to think about. And, um, you know, this is what I do. And I just thought it would be rather nice for me to pick on some things that I may have shown you before or things that I particularly like. And one of the things I particularly love to draw are mushrooms and I make absolutely no apologies whatsoever for drawing mushrooms again. I love them. 
and I have got my Tombow Fidena Suki pen here. It's got a flexible nib and this one's got the green square on it, which means it's the harder version. There's two. With the blue square, it's a soft nib, so it's you don't need as much pressure to bend it. But then I find it difficult to make very fine lines with it because I do tend to be rather heavy handed, shall we say. So here I'm going to pop in my um, the area where the gills will be. And then I'm just going to give it a top that I quite feel would be appropriate today. Doesn't matter, could have turned, turned it into the dome top, but I think I want it to spill out of these areas. And I do want to pop some gills in. So what I'm doing here, I've just popped a little border there and I'm also going to take one around behind here. So if I was going to focus on colouring this in, these would be a slightly different colour. I may put some stripes or some patterns on here. I don't know yet. But um, I definitely want to make the lines to the bottom and the left thicker. Perhaps a bit too thick here today, but as I say, it is what it is and we work with that. And then for the gills, it's almost like you've got to imagine this comes to an end here and we want all of these to sort of like bend upwards towards that area. So to that central point almost. So some of them will go behind this, others you will just see bend down like that. Because we won't be able to see what's underneath this part of the cap of the mushroom. We can only see what's behind, so you know, underneath. So they'll all be going up that way. So that's quite nice. And I do think I may just pop in some stripes. Like so. So black, 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 that'll be fine. And then I do, I did have here, I still have, I have my, my Arteza black alcohol marker here and I'll use that to fill these black lines in with ink and I'm going to leave a raggedy edge. That's unusual for me but I think here it will be appropriate if I do that and I'm doing that by just flicking my pen towards the centre and just allowing the lines to finish where they will. One went a bit far there on this side, but as I often say, that is what it is, and I'm going to live with it. I'll pop that back in there. Now, I've got plenty of space on this side, so it would be quite nice perhaps to have, um, let's have a look, perhaps another mushroom growing out behind this one and this one I can definitely um, let me have a look so let's have the same kind of shape of cap keep it simple well, you know, the the view underneath so I'll pop a second border in there and I'll draw the top I will draw this one in two parts for ease of drawing. And then I have to think about which is the left hand side and which would be in shadow. So this one, if light is coming this way, this part here left is sort of in shadow, that's pointing upwards. This is below, as is this one. This is below as well. And this one, the light would perhaps miss that side a little bit. And then I just need to pop that in. And then we'll pop these gills in as well. So let's have a look. So we'll have them bending up towards an imaginary point somewhere up here. Same on the other side, pointing towards that imaginary spot. 
so they're basically curving like that. I will put two bands in that I will add black to as well. And the other thing I want to do is I want to add some detail into the stems of these mushrooms. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some thin lines, broken lines and dots like this just to add some broken shadow. It's a bit like a, a woodcut or a lino print. You know, and even dots are a bit like stippling. It's, it's the kind of way I tend to do things. So a line will break it up and then perhaps another line and so on. And the lines... As I get towards the lighter side of the stem, where there would be a highlight, I just perhaps make them shorter. On this side, there would be a slightly longer shadow because the, the mushroom stem is rounded. So this side and this side will be further away from us. So we need to put a little bit of shadow there to suggest that. So just a little bit. And again, I'll find that black pen. So I'm sorry if you see my arm disappearing across the screen. I've got my markers to my left because I haven't got space to my right to pop them. So I'll add some this black ink in before I do anything else because it's all to hand. So I am likely to um, do these one at a time today and add the colour behind. So there's two mushrooms gasps from that I can hear the gasps from those of you who know me that I like threes but I haven't got space for a third one so I'm going to have to make my piece with this as it is and just accept that I've got two in here you know perhaps they grew as a pair you know, the bottoms could be attached where we can't see them attached. So there I've put my bounding line in. Now these are staying black and white because I like that kind of idea that I've got here on these. I have added some shadows with alcohol markers here. I may do that with this, but we'll see what happens. But maybe not because I've, I've put so much black line detail into these ones that I may not need any colour. So... What I always do is I create a swatch sheet of the colours. So the actual colours, not a photograph on screen because I like to see what they are. As with the Ohuhus and, and stuff like others, the colours you get on the caps often don't represent the colour that's on the page. And sometimes the card they sent, the colours look a bit different to the kind of paper I use. This is just printer paper, but it's white and it, it's sort of like it's not dissimilar in some ways to the um, marker paper I'm using. And so I get a better representation of what the colours will be. I've realised I haven't done the auto focus, but I have now, hopefully. So I'm trying to decide what colour background I would like. And while I'm doing that, and again, I can hear you all going, oh, will you do this? Will you do that? Ah, well, you know, where's my little... Can't see. Oh, there's my little, my little Midori. You get me. My little cup, my sweepy car. It just sweeps up little bits of. Well, it's usually pretty good at sweeping up bits of. Um, there we go. It's a couple of little bits there, I think, that it just needs a bit of. Just takes a bit of time. I've got crumbs here as well from breakfast. I had some um, sto uh, stone baked. Um, sourdough baguette or part of it with some butter and marmalade and strawberries. It's very nice, but it was very crusty, so I've got crumbs everywhere. It's a, a breakfast check email and stuff. And some mornings like today, it was a morning to play some of Sid Meier's Civilization. I think it's number five. I have. The strategy games is all I'm interested in, really. And I don't often finish it. I just find it interesting to do while my brain kicks into gear. Okie doke, so I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, I'm thinking I might like 
got this, it's a pastel green, which is a G38. It's quite a greeny colour. BG57 is a, is a slightly darker colour, but it's more to the blue side. And then I'm looking for one that would be a little bit darker, but not too much darker. So BG35. There we go. So you can most probably see the, the lids there and the colours I'm going to use. So I'm going to start with the lightest colour towards the bottom. And I'm not going to create like a solid line. I'm going to do the flicking motions again so I get that raggedy edge. Under this one actually I most probably can just colour it in as I would normally. Because I am going to add um, another colour in. I just flick it. I'm going over it a couple of times so that I kind of wet or start to saturate this particular paper. I'll leave the lid off. That's going to cause confusion and chaos later on. But uh, So with this one, I'm just going to flick it into the other one, but in the opposite direction because that would make sense here. Just little bits on this side. And then I'm just going to come back with a lighter colour and go over where they meet and check I haven't got any gaps, white gaps around. With alcohol markers, it can be a bit of a dance between the colours, back and forth until you get the intensity you like. I actually really quite like that. Okay, put the lid on the light one. So... Here I'm going to take the medium tone. I could use more colours to get a, a wider gradient, but I've got such a small area to work with. And uh, I'll see how I get on, because I may want a darker colour. It depends, depends what this one I've picked out is like, the darker colour here. So you can see I'm going over this. I will go the other direction, perhaps down here, just to get a smoother colour. Marker paper's fab because it will... It, it does depend on the pram. This is Ohuhu marker paper, which is quite sturdy and thick. But others are quite thin, but the alcohol ink remains damp on the surface for longer and less of it soaks into the paper. You don't really want to have a paper that soaks up lots of ink because you will run out of ink rather quickly. So, so if they've got a surface that's treated that helps to keep the ink on the surface rather than sink into the paper and helps the alcohol ink to remain damp for longer, then you'll get better results. So this is Ohuhu, which is quite thick actually. I did buy Arteza marker paper. Do you think I can find the book? You've got to be kidding me. I've put it somewhere safe. Okay, so there is quite a big difference between this colour and the medium one. So I am going to do a fair amount of blending here because the paler colour will act as a kind of bleach. And while the inks are still damp, they will kind of run one into the other as well. So... And then as they smooth, they'll, they'll even out a fair amount as well. This is why I love alcohol markers. And it's taken me ages to get me to say that, but I do. So if you compare this to these, the paper's much whiter. This has got a creamier tone, so the colours are purer on the white paper. But um, I found it a lot easier to get a nice blend. The alcohol markers blended nicely here, but... They bled out because the paper isn't designed for alcohol markers. So here there's no bleeding outside the edges, not unless I've missed. And if you look on the back, we can see how much these have bled through. And here there's barely any bleed through. There is some. This paper is a bit frustrating because it's marketed as you can use both sides as there won't be any bleed through of the alcohol ink. And there is. I wouldn't use, you know... I'd stick something on the top of it, use it as a sketchbook if I wanted to, but, um, uh, you know, it is what it is. Okay, so mushrooms. I love a mushroom. 
did a grocery pickup yesterday. So I'm still not really going into shop. I'm not really going anywhere. Um, but I um, did a click and collect with Tesco. Tesco is a supermarket brand here in the United Kingdom. And um, so I just find it easy, uh, less stressful. Um, you know, somebody does the shopping, I go and pick it up at a collection point. Don't have to set foot in the shop, don't have to go near many people. And it keeps me quite happy, you know. And I can get things I can't get through my Able and Cole delivery because they, they, have, they don't have foods that I do eat. Because um, I, I, I have quite broad tastes, but not all of them available through, uh, or very few of them are available through Able and Cole, it seems. And I've fallen in love with um, a kefir yoghurt, which has got strawberry and pomegranate in. I've tried kefir before. And I found it a bit too sour and not very pleasant. And this was this was an organic brand through Abel and Cole. I'm not saying it's a bad one. It's just not to my taste. But they had this on offer the last time I did a click and collect and I had it. And I thought, I really quite like this. This is OK. So I've ordered some more of that. So that'll be lunch with some fruit, I'm sure. OK, as I witter on. So um, why, why was I wittering on about that for? I have absolutely no idea. You do realise that. I've just completely lost the train of my wittering. Um, but yeah, so let's get back to this. So I've drawn a tall, thin box, which means that I'd rather like a tall, thin plant or leaves or some such. So I think I might just put a couple of big leaves in here. What you're saying? Two leaves? Oh, well, two could be three. But here, I think it's going to mean two, quite literally. So there's one leaf. And what I'm going to do here is instead of creating a traditional kind of leaf, where we put the stem in and so on, I'm just going to use this leaf shape as a way of adding perhaps some pattern and texture. I will connect this around so it looks like I've got a stem here. I'll add some lines there to suggest we've got a stem. But I've got this little area here, and I think, which way around do I want to do them? I think I might do them this way. This is one of my favourite, favourite things to do in a channel, it seems. I go back to this kind of shape again and again and again. Don't get me wrong, I love to explore new patterns and use new patterns. But when it comes to doing things without much in the way of a reference pattern or a particular pattern in mind, this is one of the things that always pops to my mind. This, and if it's a square one, it's usually well. Sort of like a more abstract lines with curves in when it could be diva dance is likely to be the one and I am going to leave that edge without that second border on I'm going to leave it like this and um, I'm also going to I think I might leave this section basically empty possibly we'll have a look now but I do feel I need to add something in at the bottom of each of these here just like this How many of you have had to go at doing this after the previous video? I just think it's a lovely way to do some work, some practice work, and to finish off or to fill a, a, a sketchbook page as well as a way to practice things and to try things out. And I couldn't leave this alone, could I? So I am weaving lines. <laughs> So in sentangle angle term, terms, I put an aura here of this line, then an aura here, here and here. So you end up with it looking like it's weaving where the ends meet. I'm trying to keep the auras about the same width. Let me get to the middle there. And I think I might just pop black in there. So we've got that one. 
So I now want to put one, I think we'll have one that sticks out like so. And yeah, it's a different shaped leaf because why not? And I have popped the stem in there. Now to the left and the bottom, so this is the bottom. And this side as well. And then this could do with being a little bit thicker like that. So that's quite nice. So what else can I do here? I think I might take this or these shapes but use them in a different way is that I think I'm going to use them just to fill this space in with pattern so I'm using those kinds of this shape here but in a different way oh, looks like I'm going to th thicken the end of these lines because I managed to put my pen down in the wrong place but that's okay it adds weight and that feeling that these these lines are a bit further away than the top. Not the easiest pen to go and correct things with this one. I could do with a finer one. So let's put some in here perhaps. And I'll pop that little bit in the middle because it does go right back to these then, doesn't it? So I'm trying to create these thicker and thinner lines as I'm working. By putting some extra pressure at the beginning of the stroke and the end of the stroke. And then I'll just keep, didn't manage to do it on that one. Can't do it at the beginning, I'll do it at the end and come back and Add some weight at the beginning. I want to leave some space there. And I think I may, I may just pop a small one in here, perhaps. And they really don't have to have the same number of lines. So there we are, I've got a couple of funky leaves. And... Uh, Let's put the box in. This is where I can adjust the size of the box if I wish. I don't think I do though because I had I was aware of where the box would be when I was drawing the leaves. And so that makes me quite happy. I'm going to let that oh, excuse me, that ink sit for a moment. And I'm going to add a Another box here, this kind of way. Oh, excuse me, I'm all sniffly again today. There must be some other pollen around that's causing me some upset or distress. Possibly. Okie doke, so what else could we do? I'll have a quick look in my Zibaldoni me. My visual reference, my visual dictionary, as it were, of patterns and motifs. And let's see if I can find something that would look... I think I know what I'd like to do here. I am going to draw this on the side rather than vertically. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a stem. And then I'm going to... draw almost like little seeds here and I'm turning my paper as I do this because I'm finding it awkward to do if I don't so if it's making you a bit woozy I apologize but what I'm doing is making something that's like an ear of wheat I suppose or grass like so and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a really long leaf. I'll pop a central line in there. 
And then in the middle of these, I'm just going to add a couple of lines coming along the center. Not doing it exactly, especially well, but I am going to add some weight this kind of way where they meet a little bit of shadowing or weight in there and that'll be quite nice and then perhaps just that little bit along the bottom the bottom edge of each just like so and then I've got enough space here that I can pop a, another one in this is why I love these pens it's so easy to create a line that starts quite thick and gradually reduces in thickness. So we are kind of weaving and overlapping these. I'm finding it easiest if I put the top one in first. She says going for the bottom one to begin with. This gives me a guide there and then you get to a point where you know you've got to the top where you can't keep overlapping them. So I'm just going to add the weight in there to connect these points at the top really and just add that. And then I'm going to be a bit more precise I think with where I put some lines so around the bottom and a little one there. Around the bottom, around the bottom, like so. I think that works. They're not the tidiest in the world. But let's have a nice leaf that goes out, like so. And then could I squish another one in here? But because I would like one that spills out of the out of the page, so And that'll do there. I think I do need to just thicken the base of the stem or the base of the the seeds here. I'm still not sh convinced of the lines I've put in. I think I should have got a finer pen out, to be honest with you. So here I'm trying different options out here as to how I add some lines in to add some shadow which is fine because that's what sketchbooks are for. So this doesn't have to be identical in any way, shape or form. So I'll add a leaf there. And then I'm quite happy with that, I think. I think that's worked quite nicely. So yeah, so just put the bounding box in. Now I could have sort of like made the box a bit smaller here, but I've taken the line there so I will make it that little bit smaller and these are going to be a bit more challenging for me to colour in because they've got ziggy zaggedy shapes on the edge but we'll have a look and uh, let's have a clean up here these have actually dried really quite quickly thank goodness there we go I won't I won't subject you to the, um, we ought to bring my desk, my, my, oh, what do you call it? Waste bin a bit closer to the desk. There we go. Be some on the floor, but that can be hovered up, or hoovered up. Okay, let me just pop my pens back. Because I've got to remember where they came from. Okay, so I want a different kind of colour for each of these. 
for these leaves, I think I'm going to go with, um, I think it might be um, an or orange, ready orange. I think that colour would be quite nice. I've got RO4 and then I want a, a, a lighter yellow, Y46. So I've got a range of, actually that colour might be, I think Y36 will do it. The other yellows are all a bit in your face. YR17 might be a... No, I'll go with these. So I've got um, a yellow, a yellowy, a deeper yellowy with a hint of orange and an orangey colour, orangey red. We'll just see how this works. So I'm going to start again with the lightest colour at the base, or it could be the side or top. It really doesn't matter how you do this. Um, I know that there are people who will colour the whole of their item with the, with the lightest colour to get the paper damp and saturated with colour. And then they'll add the colours in whatever way they feel is. You know the best for them to do this. Um, you'll see me if I do if I use alcohol markers sometimes I'll start with the darkest colour and work my way through to the lightest colour. Um, obviously then I wouldn't colour the whole page with the light you know the darkest colour and then expect to be able to lighten it with the others but you just start with that edge of it. And it's, it's experimenting as to what works with you. I tend to work randomly, I think, because I think in the end they all kind of work. But if you stick to one method, you have like um, a recipe, if it were, that you know you can work successfully. Oops, there we go. So I was worried that this orangey, this more orangey yellow wouldn't blend with that yellow. There was too big a difference in colour. But actually, it worked quite nicely. So here, because there's quite a, quite a difference between this and the red I'm going to use, I am going to colour in the whole of this section. Like so. So that looks... That, that looks fine as it is on its own, but I just think that adding this darker tone at the top, it just adds that extra depth to the colour and interest. And it doesn't have to be a lot of it, but it's just that hint, isn't it, of you know, darker. And perhaps the hint of autumn. We're heading into summer and I'm longing for autumn. <laughs> It's crazy. So I am going over this quite a bit with this light or this mid tone. I have missed very slightly there. So I think, is that my blender? I went outside the line just a little bit there and here. So I am going to use the blender pen on these spots because I think that will look quite nice now. It does. That one belongs there, that one belongs there, and that one belongs there. I put them back where they came from um, almost as soon as I've used them because they, they're in order of my swatch sheet and there's nothing more frustrating than having a swatch sheet and your numbers in the box are all out of order because I've done them. The swatch sheet actually matches in dimension, if you like, the same number of markers across and down as the box that they're stored in. You know because I can, essentially. Okay, so I've got this here and I am tempted to do some browns, golden browns or golden colours here to go with the wheat, but I'm not going to. I think I'm going to have a look at doing. I haven't done much in the way of purples, so I'm looking at purples here. So I think I'd like, oh, that's PB16. I've managed to swap that with PB14. I was thinking that looks a bit darker than I wanted. I have got, the problem with these is that they are, they, they go, a lot of them go from very light to very saturated in colour. 
And I don't want that kind of deep saturation, really. I'll go with PB06, which is that one. And then, so the P25. Let's go, let's try the P25, which is, um, there's lilac, lavender, and sweet pea purple. And I'll see what these are like. They may be all of a muchness, but, you know, it's what I have to work with here without me going to get another set of alcohol markers out. And I do so prefer these bullet tips to the brush tips. They take a bit longer to colour things in, but I've got far more control over them as well. Yeah, I know the broad end is for large areas, but that that has its own difficulties because it'd be you need to be able to manhandle them or woman handle them person handle them onto the edges and corners to get into the fine, fine cracks. Okay, so that was the lilac. Oh, this is lavender. So hopefully this will be, this should have been a slightly darker colour and it's not, but it's okay. We'll work with it and see where we go. Or have I gone to the wrong colour? No, I haven't. So I'm going to, remembering to add a fair amount and trying to make sure I get right up to the black line and in fact it can go over the black line just a tad because it won't show up and these um, Fudenosuke pens they're waterproof and they're not affected by alcohol markers it seems which is fab I knew that anyway because I've used them before for this. One well, I've just noticed I haven't put the central line in one of those leaves. I'll come back and do that now in a moment. Or as we say here in the valleys, now in a minute. Good old Wenglish. So yeah, so Tesco's Click and Collect last night was nice. I ended up having a, a conversation with a chap about who who was there to give me hand over my order to me about um, smart cars because he said, "Oh, my wife fancies one of these. How economical are they?" I said, "Oh yeah." In the long run, I've had the best part of ninety miles to the gallon out of it. I think my my upper, you know, my sort of like my um, best is I think it was eighty eight, eighty nine, and I wasn't you know speeding, but I wasn't going slow either. You know, I was sticking to a steady. It's probably 60, 65 miles an hour. Yeah, we work in miles an hour still in the UK and miles per gallon. And I'm au fait with metric system and I prefer it for so many things, but cars, still geared to this. We buy our petrol in litre, but everything's worked out in miles per gallon. It's bonkers. It's all I can say, it's bonkers. But um, anyway... So that's that's pretty good for a, a you know a car. Um, this must probably oh, I don't know how many liters per or how many kilometers per liter that is. I could look it up, but I'm not going to. So that was really nice. So it's always nice to meet somebody you can have a chat with, and um, about things, especially my smart car because you know. I've got a particular fondness for smart cars and I'm so gutted that they're only, I'm not gutted that they're only making electric smart cars, but I'm gutted because they don't have the range that would make one practical for me when I am back to going out into the world more because a, a range of 60 miles is, well, pifflingly awful, to be honest. Um, but it is what it is and... Um, you know, my little binky will do me for a, a while yet. So after that, I had to brave. I didn't have to brave, but I needed some cash because the chap who um, cleans and sanitizes my my recycling bin and my refuse bin um, fortnightly 
required paying and I didn't have any money, any cash on me, because so, just don't ask is best. And um, I uh, was not very happy at all. And um, with, with the reason why the money went out of my, my purse. It wasn't stolen or anything, it was a bill, but I think I was ripped off for, what I, well, for the work that was done. So, and it happens time and time again, but there we are. Um, and then I, so I went to the bank and my bank, the hole in the wall, wouldn't accept my card, kept telling me this card is not valid here. And I went, but I've used it here before. So I tried phoning them and, oh, at least half an hour wait, great. So my, my logical brain kicked in instead of my panicked brain. And I thought, okay, let's go and um, let's try a different hole in the wall. And lo and behold, a different brand, a different company. No problem, I had access to my money. And so I was able to get that out. And opposite there was a, a chip shop, a fish and chip shop. And if you're not British, you know, you may know that we, we love our fish and chips. Well, not fish in my case, but chips. And I just thought, right, I'll go in there. And that was a conversation. And then into a Tesco's Extra because I couldn't get the kitchen towels I wanted. And um, so I whizzed in there to get, to see if they had the kitchen towels, paper towels, because I use them in art as well as in the kitchen. And so they had them in there. They were out of stock in the big one, but in the little tes tex Tesco's Metro, it's called. Um, it's not so little either. I was able to get what I wanted there. So having to do this, going into shops and everything, oh, I get so stressed. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. But we got there in the end, so that's all that matters. Okay. How about, let's do something here that is, I haven't drawn with you, I don't think, ever. And this will be my last one. It looks like I'm starting with, a leaf, doesn't it? Does just a bit, but let me have a look here because I think this side will need to be a little bit thicker on this side, and we'll do to the left and the bottom again. It does look a bit like a leaf, doesn't it? But it's not going to be. Well, hopefully, it won't. Feathers are something that vex me, and I'll give you that much. But um, I thought I'd have a go at drawing a feather, simply because they vex me. And I think in the book I've been doing about, um, what's it called? It's not fantastic birds, it's not, it's not fabulous birds. It's something birds. This is the colouring book I'm working on at the moment, inking in the templates. I got two done yesterday. I think I've avoided drawing feathers. Lots of cute and whimsical birds though. And some pages actually made me laugh as I was drawing them. Ostriches, such funny birds. There we are, so we've got, we've got something that looks like a feather there. And um, very quickly, possibly it looks like a feather. So I'm going to add Perhaps some other details that might make it more believable as a feather. So some markings in there. And perhaps some on this side, like so. You have to decide for yourself if that reminds you of a feather or not. I'm not entirely sure myself, but that's what it is. And for that one, I think I will use some blues. So let me have a look for some blues. I think I'll use that BG07 again. 
think I'll go to BO4. It's quite a dark, deep blue. I want something in between the two. BO6, I think, or BO6 or BO7. BO6, because it's somewhere in between ish, I hope. So I'm going to take the light colour. I'm going to colour about halfway up because I want a good overlap here to get these blues and reds are the colours I find the most difficult to blend because they tend to stick so firmly to the paper. They don't want to um, thing. So yeah, so yesterday I had quite an adventure between one thing and another. But it was in the evening so the town that I live in was quite quiet and... There weren't too many people around. Now, which one did I want to do next? Oh, well, that's not the colour I wanted. It was BO4. It's a good thing I checked that. That's better. Because I think, hang on, those look very similar in colour. So I want this one, which is, should blend okay. But again, I'm going to take it up further than I want it so that I, I've got a wet edge, so it should help with blending. So yeah, so um, so even though the places were really quiet, I was the only only you know sort of customer in the, the chip shop. It's Monday after it was Monday after all, and you know, not many people go there. And it's the first time I've been into one for well month, months and months, a year or more, and um, they were really lovely in there. But like everybody, they were talking about how much how much more. Because I'd innocently asked how much, how much is that for my portion of chips? And they thought I was saying, how much? In indignation. I said, no. I said, it's not a problem. I said, that's fine. And, um, you know, I recognise that everything's gone up. I've just picked my shopping up and how expensive that is now. I don't know what it's like in other countries, but in the UK... The prices of everything are shooting up. And uh, it's quite worrisome because, you know, inflation is really high. But people's wages aren't going up. And, they, you know, there's many, many, many sectors of the working population just haven't had a pay rise in a long, long time. And so, you know, it's distressing when you hear of people who are in full-time work needing help and support from things like food banks. Um, so, so if you're not in the UK, uh, gloom and doom news, but we'll go back to art. So there we are. So I've got a feather here. I think I wanted to do this today to, as well, as both to... Make that point that you know, cho always choose a paper that's best for the medium you're using. And, you know, alcohol or marker paper definitely works the best for alcohol markers. And the, the whiteness of the paper just shows the colours up beautifully. You know, these are vibrant, but they're nowhere near as vibrant as, as these. That's for sure. So I hope you enjoyed that and that you have found it useful, helpful or something you might give a go at because it's, um, there are things that are near and dear to my heart as it were. I'm just going to pop a couple of pens down because people always say, oh, what, what do you, well they don't always because I always let you know but I've been using the Artezas today so we'll have that there. Um, I hope you have a go at this. I hope you make your sketchbooks beautifully colourful, but without having to colour everything in as well. And it's a lovely way to practice drawing motifs like, oh, you know, I call them motifs, design elements, items. So things like the mushrooms. It's great practice for mushrooms, a page full of mushrooms like this. Or leaves, um, you know, grasses or wheat. It's more of a grass. We have grasses with big fat seed heads on like that here in the UK. Feathers, whatever it is, you can do this. And 
um, I just think it's just a nice thing to do. And you've had me wittering about rubbish. So if you didn't enjoy it, please, I don't always talk about rubbish. But, you know, it's quite a big thing for me to step outside of my front door yesterday. You know, I'll do it for a Tesco's click and collect delivery, but I don't always do it for anything else. The other thing is quite nice is that I'm doing things here. Oh, I'm going to turn this into an eye. Somebody's going to complain. But aren't there feathers that have patterns and shapes on them that look very eye-like? Think of um, peacocks and whatnot. So there we go. So please don't unsubscribe or give up on me because I don't always witter about things I've been doing. Um, but yesterday was a big day, you know. I did many, multiple things. I haven't done that for months and months since I had to go to the opticians a number of times in a short space of time. Check up, pick my glasses up, go back with a pair of glasses where the prescription wasn't right, they haven't made the lenses right, and then go back to pick the corrected lenses up. I know, it's bonkers, but we get there. So yeah, and it stresses me out each and every time at the moment still, so. I'll get there bit by bit. So enjoy your day. I hope you give this a go. If you do, let me see what you've been up to because I'd love to see. And I, I'd really like this actually. And I suspect things like this are like, I do do from time to time coloring pages where I have these little frames all over. And I put a, I put like a Zentangly pattern frame round or a fancy frame with a picture inside but I think I might do one that's got all of these kinds of things with these squares behind I might just for me I'd just add colour to the background squares but I know my colourists they'll colour everything in because they love to colour um, but I just sometimes think that black and white is quite nice some shadow could be used these are a bit I something is needed with these to help to bring them up let me have a quick look. I've got some, I've got some um, greys out on my desk because I was using them yesterday. So let me have a look. Where's my light greys? Looking for the light, light grey. Oh, that's a blush grey. I didn't want that one. A oh, cool grey. I want the fossil grey. Don't want the stone grey. Stone blue, too, too dark, CG05, that will be the next one. So let me just have a look at this. I'm going to add some shadows just around the edges, I think. This one, just this one, perhaps just to see the difference it makes, see? I said I wasn't going to do this, but I am because those look so, and the feather as well, they look so flat. This is just, a, these are just two, two lightest um, sort of like cool greys I've got in the Artezas. They're not from the 144 set. They're from, I think they're the landscape set. So I put the darker one in and now I'm just going around where the darker one is and helping it to blend into the lighter grey. And I'm just extending that lighter grey just a little bit. And then somewhere here... I have my blending pen and I'm going to use that just to soften the edge of that grey, the light grey, encourage it to move outwards. don't know if this makes a difference but I am just putting the pen to, into the lighter grey and then just flicking it outwards. I think the hope is that the grey will travel along those lines and soften in that kind of direction. And then that gives, that actually makes this look so much better, doesn't it? Even though it's, it's you know, that we've got grey there, but it will lighten as it dries, remember? Like with all wet media, they do lighten as they dry. So here I'm just going to add some of that there and perhaps I'll pop a little edge of the lighter grey on the other edge 
and then I'm going to run over this with the blender just to lighten this up a little bit and get things blending and then on this one I think let's do grey where they overlap just that little hint there perhaps getting a little bit longer towards the longer areas and then perhaps putting that tiny darker bit could have done with just putting it in the corner I think I've gone a bit far with that one um, Just using the lighter grey then just to blend that out that little bit. And then I can come back with the colourless blender just to blend those edges out. See, I do this all the time, don't I? I'm going to say goodbye and I come back and go, oh, let's do this. My therapist would say I have a, an attachment problem. <laughs> but, yeah, I, it, it's a feature. I understand what it's about and I, I'm working on it. I'm a work in progress still. So I am going to add some shadows on my feathers as well. Perhaps not use the darker grey, just the lighter grey. And just see if that will help to bring some structure out here and there. It will do because it's the nature of it. Just add some there. Perhaps if I make that, um, that shaded part that little bit darker, it will, around there, it will become less like an eye and more like a pattern on the feather. We'll see. There. So, actually, those shadows, now everything looks a bit strange, doesn't it, without them? <laughs> Oh, you can have another 10 minutes, so. Yeah, I'm popping the shadow down at the bottom of each of the seeds that make these little bits up. Because that's where the shadows would be greatest, it's where they overlap. And um, I'm just going to leave that and just... Use a colourless marker just to blend the edge a little bit. It's about smoothing and softening that edge. I actually haven't done that one. So that we don't get that harsh line. This is the one thing that alcohol markers can be a bit of a pain for. Is the... Um, is leaving a harsh edge. So... For using, you know, um, a gradient of colours like this, it's easier to get a smooth blend. And I find it easier when I work in small areas like this. Um, oh, oops, I've picked up the darker one. Okay, we'll go with this. I'll leave a highlight on one side. And perhaps let's go with the blender and just blend this because the background's now dried so we won't, don't have any worries about things going through there. Okay, which one's the lightest? Okay. So here I'm just going to Flick some shadows to this side. And the darkest part there and round the edge. The centre part there. So I'm going to do some there. Up the sides and then the bottom bit will have some shadow in it. And I am going to come back and add some of the darker shadow in a moment. I'm just tiniest bit along here. We need some there. 
some there. I will come back with this darkest one on this one because behind here would be quite dark. And I will add just a tiny hint of darkness, darker shadow on those, but not on the caps and so on. Oh, wrong one. I wanted the colourless blender. And what I will do is I'll only do this one and then I'll leave these then as a comparison so you can compare the two mushrooms and see the difference just a little bit of shadow makes. So I was going to leave them plain, plain and you know, no shadow, but it's always good to experiment. Avoid colouring, adding this to all of the all of the paper, and then you'll get a clear, clean white area. So you can see the difference, hopefully, that the um, shadows have made. So this is all about me leaving a picture that's interesting and has some information there or some pens you can identify. So there we go, and that is my 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 page partly finished. I know it's a longish video, about an hour seems to be standard for me these days, but I hope it's given you some ideas and you can see what you can do. And, you know, you could do a whimsical house like this, as you draw the house with it sticking out the box and you just have the box as the background. And, um, you know, just add simple colours then to the house maybe, I don't know. But anything, I've chosen botanicals and a feather. So, thank you for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope my wittering hasn't put you off. And I hope to see you here again for the next video. So until then, take care of yourselves. Enjoy life as much as you can. And whatever that means, because you don't have to do amazing things to enjoy life, do you? I enjoy my life every day because I enjoy being creative and doing what I do. So... Yes, take care and be creative. Ta-ra for now. Bye.